Hey everybody, welcome back to net.touchplus.com. My name is Jeffrey Way, and in lesson two of our SaaS Quick Tip series, we're gonna focus on two things. First, we're gonna be taking a look at mixins. And you can think of mixins in the same way that you would think of functions. So these mixins can be past arguments to clarify what color something should be, what side a rounded corner should be on. It gives you a lot of flexibility in that area. And then second, we're gonna be taking a look at something called selector inheritance. So don't let that scare you. It's really not scary at all. What it does though, is it allows you to inherit the properties assigned to another class. But what it does so in a way where it doesn't duplicate all of that code, which is something that you can fall into when working with Mixin. So we're gonna take a look at both of those in lesson two. Let's dig in. So I'm gonna go back into MacVim and I have a blank style.scss page. So in lesson one, we learned about how to use variables. To clarify, we could do something like color is red and that way we can reference that variable anywhere in our project. And then we also learned about doing things like nesting. So we have UL and then we could nest in an LA an li that way we don't have to do uli and it saves a bit of room and it's a little bit cleaner some might feel let's focus on mixins and selector inheritance so the first thing we're going to do is to declare a mixin we use the at symbol followed by mixin and this is the way we declare it and next we give it a name so when would you use mixins you would use one anytime you have a block of information that can be applied to multiple properties or multiple classes the most commonly used one would be something like rounded corners. You could create a function called rounded, and whenever that function was is called, it'll echo out all of the vendor-specific styling, like Moz border radius, WebKit border radius, border radius. So let's try that out. We'll call this rounded. And we declare it just like a normal property here. And we'll begin by doing WebKit, WebKit border radius. And we'll say five pixels. We're gonna hard code that in for the time being moz border radius and then we're going to do the official form which always needs to be at the bottom now there's one problem here is we're hard coding that five pixels in aren't we wouldn't it be better if instead we pass in an argument and then we can also set a default if we want to so we can pass in arguments similar to the way you're probably used to with normal functions with maybe php and you simply do it right here and this is where we'll pass in a value and we'll say radius now, if we want to set a default, we can do it just like that. But now, instead of here, we can simply pass in radius. Isn't that helpful? Now, to use this, let's go here and let's create something, something fictional, and we'll call it box. And if we want to receive those properties, we call include rounded. Now, if you're passing in arguments, you need to pass this. However, if you're not, you can simply do it like that and it'll work as well. But in this case, I do want to override it and I'm gonna override it with 10 pixels. So now this property will receive everything that you see right here. And let's test it out now. Let's go into style.scss and notice that box has received all that. Very cool. So that's exactly how you use mixins. Now, if we wanna to test to make sure that it'll work without it, I can simply get rid of all that. And when I save it again, let's go back. And now you can see that it receives the default. So that's how you use mixins. So if we go back, we call at mixin. We give the mixin a name, in this case, rounded. If you want to pass in arguments, you do that within parentheses. If you want a default, you can add that, but it's not required. And then you simply reference that. But now I want you to note if I do box two and we do the exact same thing, we're going to include that mixin and we'll keep that as the default again. If I go back, notice that all of those properties are being repeated. So that brings us to the next one we're gonna focus on, and that's selector inheritance. So let's go back, and I'll go ahead and get rid of these. And this time, we'll simply declare this as a class, and we'll do it again, rounded. And we'll yank that, paste it in, but let's go ahead and change this back to a default of five pixels, okay? So now let's say I have box three, and I want to inherit all of those properties, but I don't want to duplicate any extra code. In that case, I can do extend, at symbol extend, and we're going to extend rounded. And then here we can continue adding more. So if we were to say color is red, 
Okay, so let's save that and now we go back. Now can you see here, no code was repeated here. It's simply a comma and this receives it. But then we extended it, we added some extra information and that gets placed right there. So you have your choice of when you need to use mixins and when you need to use selector inheritance, but both of them will save you a great amount of time. All right, so that's gonna do it for lesson two. In lesson three, we're gonna go into some more advanced topics and I guarantee you're gonna like them. So stay tuned to NetTouch for more tips and tutorials. My name's Jeffrey Way, and I'll see you in lesson three. Bye.